Hello, I'm Julie Peasgood and welcome to Cruise Myths Debunked. Now over the next 30 minutes, we're going to be unashamedly talking about the most common myths, misconceptions and cliches that cruise holidays have attracted in exactly the same period of time as growing tremendously in popularity. But I can't do it alone. So who better to help debunk fact from fiction than the cruise industry expert Andy Harmer from the Cruise Lines International Association. Andy. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> I'm going to deliver you a whole list of myths oh um, and cliches. Okay. And I'm just going to deliver them and let you answer them. How does that sound? Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Putting my specs on. <laughs> oh dear, now okay. you look even sterner. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Take some notes, Miss Marshall. <laughs> um, let's start with the myth, okay, that cruises are for old stuffy folk. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? Incredibly unfair. You know, we're about 1.8 million British people took a cruise last year. Globally, about 24 million people took a cruise last year. They're not all old, they're not all stuffy, <laughs> I can assure you. In fact, one of the great things about the changes that we've seen in the cruise industry over the last kind of 20 years is that they there really is now a cruise for everybody. So whether you're a family or a single traveller or young couple or group of friends or an older guest or somebody who's just looking for a fantastic holiday to choose from, uh, then cruising offers something for everybody. So yes, of course there are some cruise ships and cruise lines who really do cater for the older cruise guests, but there are many more options available and that's the great thing about cruising. Fantastic. It's not on my list, but it's a question from me. Oh dear. Um, single, is it, is it a good holiday for, for people who wish to travel alone? It's perfect for single travellers. Firstly, of course, it's, cruising can be a really sociable choice of holiday if that's the kind of holiday that you're looking for. Secondly, many cruise lines purpose build single cabins into their ships so that you know that you don't have to pay too much in supplements that you do in all hotels. Mm. And thirdly, many yeah. cruise lines now really do look after their single guests. So on some ships, for example, they have a communal area next to their single cabin so that if you are a single traveller and you want to network with other single travellers, then there's kind of an area that you can do that. But also they go to lengths such as in the speciality restaurants, for example, what they'll do is they'll allocate a table at a certain time to single travellers so that you can just book onto that table and know that you're not going to be sat with another boring couple or anything like that, but you're going to be sat with like-minded people. But, Fantastic. And that's just a couple of examples of how they really Great. do try to make sure every guest is happy and looked after. So it's almost more inclusive than a land-based holiday could be. Absolutely. And of course, you spend the whole week uh, with cru other cruise guests, uh, exploring different destinations, mm -hmm. spending time on board. So you, it is a much more sociable holiday if that's what you want of course if all you want to do is lock yourself away or read a good book up on deck or ignore everybody else of course you can do that it's all about having the holiday that you want fantastic great okay second myth to debunk cruises are expensive for goodness sake, where have, they, where have you been hiding? Uh, like all holidays, you can pay as much or as little for a holiday as you can imagine. So of course, if it's a special occasion, if you really want to treat yourself and your other traveling companions, then you can of course go for something really ultra luxury, really expensive, really, really is a special treat. But you don't have to. So there are many other holiday, cruise holiday choices available. Uh, they start very low price. And of course, they're really inclusive. So it includes your food, it includes your entertainment, it includes your daytime activities. It whisks you from one port to another port so the destinations are there waiting for you as well. It's not expensive. It's fantastic value. Great. Don't take it out on me. I am blaming Andy. you entirely for these, these are questions. These questions on my list. <laughs> OK, I'll be stuck on board. Right. That's, and we hear that a lot, of course, from people who have never cruised before. Let's give you an example. Let's say you're going to take a 14-night cruise holiday in the Mediterranean. You are likely, out of those 14 nights, you're likely to spend 10 of those with the ship docked in a port which allows you to explore that destination and that port and get off the ship and stretch your legs or jump on an excursion and visit some of the fantastic attractions and features around you. So no, absolutely not. There will be a couple of sea days within a normal cruise holiday. Firstly, it gives you the great opportunity to get to know the ship and its layout and what's where and, and everything else that's happening on board. But secondly, it allows you 
uh, allows the ship, of course, to travel if it needs to go a fair distance. So if it needs to get from one port to another port and it's quite a long way, then they will put it in as a sea day so that, again, you can relax on board. But also remember that actually exploring these ports can, for some people, be quite tiring and they may get tired and just want to kick back and relax. That's why a lot of people love a sea day where you're on board, on deck or relaxing by the pool or doing whatever you want to do. So sea days are great for some people, but no, you absolutely can. You spend most of your time actually off the ship than on the ship. OK, Doug. Cruises are crowded. Are they? Well, <laughs> I've never experienced that. Um, the, so, so I guess that refers to the fact that many of the bigger ships now being built will take a lot more guests than, say, some of the smaller ships will have done maybe 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there are some ships that carry uh, a large number of guests, but the ships are built and designed to make sure that when you're on board, you really feel like you're not surrounded by thousands of other people and actually it still feels like more of an intimate uh, experience. And they do that by designing neighbourhoods. So you'll go for your dinner in a restaurant and there'll be a bar located nearby and there'll be other places to relax nearby and that's your area of the ship for the night and there's other neighborhoods throughout the ship so don't worry there are great experts designing our <laughs> ships which means that they look at guest flow and what works and what doesn't work so no it doesn't feel crowded ever good and if you're worried about that you can choose a small intimate ship or a river boat yeah you know, ship Absolutely. which is 180 to 200 guests right. whatever exactly yeah. yeah so so if you don't want that big ship experience then you don't have to go on that big ship experience right. there are hundreds of ships to choose from as i've said before there yeah. is a ship for you yeah. choose one that's less with less guests on yeah. board Board, um, or as you say, river. River is a great way to 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 relax and enjoy yeah. holiday. Or, or the Queen's favourite ship, Royal Hebridean, which is very which small is indeed. Very small and select. Absolutely. And some of those expedition ships actually that explore places like Alaska or the Far East or Antarctica or yeah. Ar Arctic take up to about 100 guests. So again, if you don't want that experience, if you don't want that big ship experience, then don't book it. But I have to say. Guests love the big ship experience. Those people traveling in big groups of uh, friends yeah. or family or with children, what a great way to enjoy a holiday where there's so much activity and entertainment and dining and places to explore. Some people absolutely love that yeah. holiday. And it is a cliche to say it, but there is something for everybody. There really is, you <laughs> see? Is. OK, <laughs> I'll be bored. Yeah. Goodness me. Well, again, <laughs> actually, as we were talking about that big ship experience, that, that kind of defies that entirely because those big ships, one of the great benefits of having larger ships is that there's a lot more space to put activities and entertainment and fun things to do. So it could be water slides, planetariums, ice skating rinks, zip wires. You can learn to surf. There's so much to choose yeah. from that you really are spoiled for choice. So, so no. And if you want lots to do during the day when you're on board those ships, then do choose the bigger ships. If you want that quieter experience, that more relaxed experience, then maybe a smaller ship is for you. Yeah, I'm very fortunate, hand on heart, I, I can say this, but I'm very fortunate to have been on 59 cruises. Wow. I have never, ever, ever been bored once. No, and you know what's lovely about a holiday and what's, what's great about being surrounded by sea as you're sailing, as the sun is setting over the Mediterranean, to be sat there just watching the world go by or reading a book or having, yeah. you know, a nice conversation with a fellow traveller, it's, it's a fantastic way to relax as well. I don't know where this next one comes from, but a cruise isn't a cultural experience. Who uh, were misses? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's almost <laughs> difficult to explain. Um, so it's if, totally a cultural experience, it, isn't it? Well, it depends on your itinerary. Well, it's in, entirely a cultural experience if that's the kind of holiday you're looking for. So the great thing about cruising is that the, you move from place to place. So again, if you go back to that Mediterranean cruise of 14 nights, that's about 10 to 11 places that you'll visit during your holiday. And you go to, and of course, the Mediterranean and that part of Europe is famous for its culture. Yes. From Ephesus through to Pompeii to Istanbul, to Istanbul, the great cities of France, southern France, you know, the Spanish coast. I mean, there's so much culture, so much history. And cruise lines have invested a lot of time and energy in creating excursions that people really would enjoy. So mm. if you are looking to visit some of these historical places or explore the culture or really get uh, in amongst the local locals as it were then there'll be an excursion for you if you'd rather just get off the ship and shop or flop on a beach then of course you have that option too but that's the great thing about a cruise is that you really do get those choices excellent um 
okay, that's fine if you're saying that, but I won't <laughs> see anything off the beaten track. <laughs> well, well, again, yeah. <laughs> we both know, yeah. based on your 59 cruises, that that's not <laughs> true either. So again, it, it, and I think a lot of these questions, a lot of these myths, if you like, come from people who, who don't, you know, who haven't had the cruise experience explained to them or they haven't investigated or simply don't know the choice that is available. So a lot of our cruise ships are built for expedition cruising. So Antarctica and Arctic, Asia, uh, some of Africa, uh, Alaska, places like that, fantastic places to explore. You can do it on really small ships if you want that experience, or mm. you can do it sometimes on larger ships, again, if you want that experience too. Yeah. But but what's great about cruising, it, you know, there are thousands of ports that we explore every single year uh, for our cruise guests, and they have a fantastic time. Everything from from big cities to small towns to countryside to really that that kind of off the beaten mm. track experience. Yeah, and you can go off piste yourself and go off the beaten track. I would I would say better to do it in where the language isn't isn't too unfamiliar and where you do feel sort of within your comfort zone. But but within that, you can definitely go off the beaten track. Oh, absolutely! I, I remember I did a cruise uh, in China. China is a fantastic place, and you always feel like you're off the beaten track in China. <laughs> It's, a, it's such a fascinating country to visit okay. and very easy to do on a cruise, of course, because you know that the ship is there. You know the ship's crew are there. If you're on an excursion, they're all there to look after you and make sure that yeah. you, you really get to experience. But you're still exploring these incredible places. So great. cruising is great for that. One more question before we break. Okay. Cruising isn't for children. Well, so, <laughs> so actually one of the big growth areas we've seen over the last 10 years has been very much in family cruising. So again, those bigger family resort style ships have lots of entertainment, lots of activities for kids. Most cruise lines offer kids clubs in uh, out of term time uh, so that there's lots for the kids to do. And they tend to split those clubs up into age groups so that they focus their activities and entertainment and match them with the right age group. Lots for families to do. And what's great about a cruise is that you then meet up halfway through the day for lunch and at the end of the day for dinner and, and share your stories. Andy, do stay with us. We're going to take a break. You are debunking every myth so in one too. fell swoop. <laughs> Please don't go anywhere. We'll be debunking more cruise myths with Andy in just a few minutes' time. Hello and welcome back to Cruise Myths Debunked, where Andy Harmer from the Cruise Lines International Association is helping to debunk the most common cruise myths and misconceptions and cliches. I think we're doing really well. Can I just plough on with my list? Uh, well, I think you will anyway, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Um, next myth, I'll have to get dressed up every night. So again, one of the big changes that we've seen in the cruise industry over the last 20 years is that we have relaxed the dress code on the majority of our cruise ships and for the majority of nights. You know, as a, as a society, we're becoming much more relaxed. And of course, that's reflected uh, in your holiday experience as well. However, on some cruise lines, you still get the opportunity, if you so wish, to dress up and really go formal. Uh, again, it's worth checking with your travel agent, worth checking with the cruise line as to whether they have a formal night, because if that's your thing, there are some that are still available. But generally, we've relaxed the dress codes because you're on holiday and you want to relax. Uh, and particularly because a lot of our cruises are in hot destinations and in summery destinations. And so, of course, the dress code, it kind of corresponds to the weather too. Very good, exactly. I'll have to eat dinner with people I don't know. <laughs> well, um, okay, so, well, again, in the last 20 years, the, the style of dining on board cruise ships has changed phenomenally. So it used to be one dining room with set dining times, that was your choice. Nowadays, it's it's much different to that. So on some cruise lines, actually, there's up to about 25 different restaurants to choose from. And it is like going to a restaurant in a normal place and that you book a time and you book a table of how many people you want to share yeah. with. So that's fantastic. Of course, there are some cruise lines who still offer that choice of big restaurant, a big main dining room and larger tables. And that's great for people who want to be sociable, who want to meet new people. Great to share stories over dinner of what yeah. they've been up to during the day so again it's back to choosing the holiday that's right for you yeah and sometimes those people you don't know become some of your very dearest friends absolutely over the and again we'll, cru we'll cruise with you in the future yeah. and become lifelong friends absolutely okay. you're gonna hate this next oh, one. Oh dear okay 
Talking of dinner, the food is below par. <gasps> Oh, <laughs> steady the boss. <laughs> I have never had, and I have cruised quite a lot myself, and I have never had a bad meal. The investment that goes into the dining on board our cruise ships is incredible. To the extent that we have many celebrity chef tie-ins with our restaurants on board cruise ships. Yes. Who'd have thought that? So whether it's Jamie Oliver or Nobu. Or Marco Pierre White. Or Marco Pierre White or James Martin or any of those great chefs that we all know and love. Yep. Many of them have restaurants on board cruise ships, yep. so you get the chance to eat proper celebrity chef dining. Brilliant. It's great food. It's great food. Yep. And it's not just dinner, of course. It starts with breakfast and then there's food available and then there's lunch and then afternoon tea and dinner and there's yep. food available in between times. The food is incredible. I, I couldn't agree with you more. The choice is extraordinary. Yes. And for me, the best restaurant, the best meal I think I've ever had in my life was on Crystal's Serenity in the Nobu restaurant. Uh, and that was better. I mean, not only did you not have to queue um, and book ahead for months to get in there, you know, as you might in his land-based restaurant, right. it was extraordinary. And that was on board so yeah and we'll actually debunk that myth yeah and the other <laughs> thing about our, our the restaurants on board cruise ships is many of them are fantastic venues for eating as well so mm. much style great style great design there's food pairing with wine if you want to do that and you can have private dining you can have food yes. brought to your cabin so yes. that you can have that on your balcony i mean really Whoever suggested that was was true of cruising. Lordy, lordy, well, you're gonna what you're gonna say about this next one? Everyone puts on weight on a cruise. Well, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I think that's quite. <laughs> Again, the great thing about cruising is there's something for everybody. So most of the uh, the cruise ships that are sailing the planet have great gyms on board, great health clubs on board. So Very if you do good. want to hit the gym, there is one available. The other thing I find when I go on a cruise holiday is you're exploring these places. You walk a lot. So actually, yes. and you <laughs> the walk, bigger the ship, the more you absolutely. walk. Absolutely. <laughs> so there's always that benefit uh, of cruising. Uh, but in the other thing, of course, is that if you get your menu for dinner, there's always some healthy choices on yes. there. So you don't always have to go for the food that you know that you shouldn't have. Yeah. But let's be honest, you're on holiday. Yeah, and you do tend to calm down. For the first couple of days, you might have every meal and go wild and afternoon tea and sandwiches and late night snacks. But then it just can't, it does calm down. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. The cabins and staterooms are really small. Well, they're not. Uh, they are bedrooms and that's really what they're for. They're your bedroom and that's that's really how they're built. Uh, many of them have a private uh, balcony, which is fantastic, particularly if you're going to places like the Mediterranean or Alaska and you want to not miss a thing as you're sailing, then having your private balcony there is a fantastic uh, thing to do. Uh, I love it in the evenings before dinner, having a cheeky glass of wine or something on the balcony as, we, as you get Devil. ready. I know, <laughs> as you get ready for dinner but uh, another lovely thing to do actually is have breakfast on your balcony that's a great thing that you don't get to do very often of course back home yeah but my next question is a, is a balcony a necessity or a balcony is a necessity it's not is it i mean you can still have a great time in your stateroom and cabin without one it's not a necessity it is a great to have so essentially there are kind of four different types of rooms so you inside cabins are as they uh, as they sound inside the lowest price so if you're looking for a lower price mm -hmm. holiday then that's a great choice uh, the second one is uh, rooms with a simple window so that you have the view but of course you don't have that private outdoor space then those balcony cabins which I love and in fact I kind of insist upon uh, paying that little bit extra because it's not much more no. uh, and then there are suites which are for those people who really want to celebrate their holiday in style yeah but I think you know any of those are fantastic it's the same food it's the same entertainment it's the same activities it's the same destinations but i personally think that having that own private space on your ship is lovely okay cruising is too regimented really mm. well and i think we've been saying it all along and you can have the holiday that you want so yeah. there may be loads of activities and entertainment to do on a cruise ship but you don't have to take part in them if you don't want to you can still find a quiet corner with your book or chatting or with a coffee so absolutely not and it actually we talk a lot about uh, ships docking and the excursions mm. that you can do you don't even have to get off the ship if you don't no. want to and some people don't because the ship is nice and quiet and they can go to the spa or they can relax yeah. by the pool you, that's the one of the great things about a cruise is you really can do what you want to do do you know that i quite like the 
I wouldn't say it was regimented, but I like the fact that you know your timings in the day. It gives the day a structure. You can plan accordingly. And I actually feel it's quite comfortable. I like that. Yeah, I think the great thing about going on holiday is you can switch off. Yeah. So you can switch off your email. You can switch off that connectivity. But actually, as you switch off your brain, I think you're right. It is nice to know that you have to be here at a certain yeah. time or back on board at a certain time because it does kind of it yeah, does help. gives you a structure. Absolutely. Faye, if you've spoken about email, one of the myths is I won't be able to stay in touch with family and friends. What would you say about that? Well, sometimes that's a nice thing, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so most, most ships now have connectivity. You are able to get a signal on most ships okay. at most ports. But of course, please remember these are ships that are often going to uh, quiet places of the world where there may not be a lot of people. So you won't always get connectivity. On many of the newer ships, they're really investing in Wi-Fi and things yep. so that you can connect actually better than I can at home sometimes. Mm. Um, but again, it's down to choice. And of course, if the ship is docked in a port during the day, then you can normally find, if you want Wi-Fi, you can connect in a cafe or something. Free Wi-Fi on land is becoming much more popular. But generally, you'll get a signal in many places that they sail. I'll have to fly to join a cruise ship. Do you know, almost half of British <laughs> cruise guests last year, almost half, started their cruise holiday at a UK port. <laughs> and in fact, a lot of people talk about, when you talk about UK port, they think Southampton. There are 19 cruise ports in the UK where you can start your cruise holiday from. So if you want to be close to that port of call, if you want to chuck all of your luggage and the microwave and the kitchen sink into your car <laughs> and drive down to the port and fill your car that way, then absolutely, what an easy way to start your holiday. Now, some people, of course, do still want to fly cruise because they want to go somewhere a bit more exotic or they want to fly two hours and straight into the guaranteed sunshine. Again, it's down to choosing the holiday that's right for you. Excellent answer. Final question. Okay. Tell me what you're going to say about this one, Andy. <sighs> Cruising has lost its charm and glamour. Oh, oh, oh. never heard Slow anything like it. <laughs> Never heard anything like it. You know, cruising is a really fantastic experience. You're surrounded by water. The service on board is incredible. You visit some of the most incredible places on earth. Uh, you get to sail with some of the, some fascinating people who can become lifelong friends. It, it's a great way to go on holiday. Definitely full, I would say, of charm and glamour. Full of charm and glamour. As are you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining thank me. That you. was fantastic. OK, and thank you to you for watching. I'll see you again next time here on TV Cruise Channel. See you soon.